My book Chasing Venus is about a race to measure the heavens in the 18th century. And in the 18th century the only way to measure the solar system was by observing a transit of Venus. Now a transit of Venus is when the planet Venus moves between Sun and Earth and you see Venus as a small black dot crossing the face of the Sun for around six hours. It's one of the rarest astronomical events and it happens in pairs, eight years apart, and then it takes more than a century for them to occur again. The only problem was that you could only use the data if you had hundreds and hundreds of astronomers taking the times of the transit of Venus at the same time from as many locations across the world as possible. So in the 18th century this is, there's this amazing race of hundreds of astronomers crossing the world to places like Tahiti, Siberia, the Arctic Circle, India, in order to collect this data and to work together to calculate the size of the solar system. And Chasing Venus for me really is a science thriller but also an adventure story. So it's not just about science, it's also about the personal stories of the astronomers as they set out on their dangerous journeys. So you have astronomers from France, you have astronomers from Russia, from England, from Italy, from across the world working together for the first time ever in this global scientific endeavour. And there are just extraordinary stories behind it. There's for example a French astronomer called Le Gentil who sets out, he's the very first one to set out in 1760, sets out from France, he sails to Pondicherry, but everything goes wrong. So he gets attacked by the British, he, is, uh, he gets into hurricanes, he almost dies of tropical diseases, and finally he arrives at the coast um, of India. And just as he's about to get off his boat, he hears that the French colonial town of Pondicherry has been taken, has been taken by the British army. So his captain decides, well, they can't land here now because it's too dangerous. So they turn around the ship and they sail back to Mauritius. So he can't see the transit of Venus. So he's traveled there over a year and he can't see it because he's in the middle of the ocean. But never mind, he thinks, because there's one more chance for him to see a transit of Venus, which is eight years later. So instead of going back to France, he hangs around in the region. He stays in the Indian Ocean. And a year before the transit, the second transit, he sails to Manila because he thinks that's the best place to watch it, only to be then ordered by the French Academy of Sciences to go to Pondicherry again. So off he goes again, packs his bag, sails to Pondicherry, arrives there a few months before the transit, plenty of time, sets up his observatory, prepares his instruments and waits for Venus. At the same time you have Captain Cook sailing on the endeavour to Tahiti. You have another French astronomer who sails to California, which is then held by the Spanish. He arrives so late, he arrives a few days before the transit, that he decides to set up his instrument in a typhus-ridden mission, Jesuit mission in California, risking his life for the transit of Venus. You have Catherine the Great, who is so enraptured by the idea of the transit of Venus that she sends out eight expeditions across the vast Russian Empire. You have Mason and Dixon of the Mason and Dixon line who observe the transit at the Cape of Good Hope. You have Benjamin Franklin organizing telescopes for his colonial friends in Philadelphia and in Harvard University. So you have hundreds and hundreds of astronomers all working together uh, to discover the size of the solar system. I'm not going to tell you what happens at the end, um, so you really have to read the book. But what I can tell you is that what they discover really changed the world, the way we see the world. And it also changed the way how we see science today. On the 5th and 6th of June 2012, you have the once in a lifetime opportunity to see another transit of Venus, the last one actually, until 2117. And when we see the small dot of Venus crossing the face of the Sun, we do so standing on the shoulders of the astronomers who watched the same thing 250 years ago.